Oberyn Martell, aka the Red Viper, aka the father of the Sand Snakes, aka the melon that bursted underneath the mountain, sucks. If you look a little deeper at this Dornish Prince, you'll see he's just an edgelord. And later on in this video, we're going to go more in depth into his backstory, putting some pieces together about this man's dark secrets. But honestly, dude, Oberyn Martell did more harm than good in the story. Yeah, I think so too. And you know, the thing is, I understand from the whole uh, fandom's point of view, because this is like a really popular character. Everybody kind of sucks him off, right? It's easy to fall into the trap because if you rewatch those scenes, and you know, me and Don, we, we both did. We both rewatched these scenes. It is easy to look at that and see like, oh man, this guy is like perfect, right? This guy's almost perfect. Right. It's like it's Martell History Month, right? Like they're painting this guy in such a great light and the books do the same thing, right? Like he almost can do no wrong. But if you look a little bit deeper, not only is he an edgelord, but I actually kind of think he's a scumbag. Like no joke. I actually think he's a scumbag in a lot of ways. We'll, we'll go into well, it here, obviously. But his character is built on these like several pillars that define him. And I think each one of those is actually really shitty. So in the books, they make it a lot more clear about like what swordsmen like Jamie and other fighters think of archers. They hate them because they just like stand back and they shoot arrows. And it's like, come on, you yeah, little, yeah. You little cowardice. Yeah, you little, <laughs> little, you little wussy, come over here. And then the poison, they look even further down upon that, you know. So uh, him using poison is like the staple. And it, it's also his claim to fame because he's known as the Red Viper because he was caught in bed with another high lord. Uh, was it Edgar Ironwoods? Uh, Paramore? Yeah, Ironwoods, yep. Yeah, he's caught in bed with her. And then instead of like a battle to death, because you can't really do that to the Dornish prince, they just do like a battle to like first draw blood. And it's basically a draw. And because Oberyn was able to use his poison dagger, the guy like his his wound festers and he dies. Yeah, oh man, I forgot That's I dipped little, that one in poison. He's a shitster. That sucks. That's not cool. You're like, oh yeah, let's let's do a gentleman's agreement here. Oops, you died. Sorry. Wah, wah. Like, I'm I'm not gonna lie. It is kind of simp behavior from the Ironwood, from Edgar Ironwood, to like try to do a gentleman's agreement after you catch some other dude in bed with your wife. I that is a little bit bitch behavior. This this is the source of so much of this because yeah, the poison is one thing. Get to that in a minute. But it's like if you can imagine your spouse like cheating on you or something like that with some other dude. Yeah, it's ultimately your spouse's fault. But you're still pissed off at the other guy, right? You're still gonna be pissed at that guy. It's like the Red Viper. Oberyn Martell, he's the other guy. He's the other yes. guy. This is like a this is like a low life, man. Any reasonable dude would go up to a girl if you're trying to hit on some girl, or whatever, and you find out she's married, regardless if it's to a high lord or not. This could have been a common marriage from common folk. Prima Nocta was eliminated back under Jaharis, man. This is ridiculous. This is a huge dick move from Oberyn Martell. And then not only that, you're caught. You're caught. This guy says, yeah, I know you slept with my paramour, and I'm really pissed about that. And normally I would challenge you to fight to the death, but since you're a Martell and since you're a young lad, a <laughs> strapping young lad, I just want to kind of assert my dominance over you. So let's just have a gentleman's match to first blood and see where it goes. I think I'm going to win. And they both do cut each other up pretty well. So it's possible that Edgar actually was the one that drew first blood, right? He may have actually won that match. I don't remember if they said who won it or not. But yeah, this little shyster dips his thing in poison like, <laughs> just to make sure he delivers a killing blow like what he didn't end up with that girl he didn't end up with right. his paramour yeah. so what the hell was it all for i mean it makes more sense just, if ironwood poisoned his blade because he's trying to get back at yeah it uh, does exactly at oberon but oberon's the one that poisons him it's like dude this guy did nothing what did what wrong did this lord ironwood ever do to anybody other than maybe not pleasing his paramour and it's not even his wife it's his paramour right if it's his wife that's even more. And don't get me started. We'll get into it later about the whole like lover situation within the Dornish culture because I think we need to just uh, unpack that a little bit uh, on how unrealistic it is and like all the problems that just ensues when you just you know promote that kind of behavior. But th there's also a theory. Do you want to talk any more about Ironwood? I guess maybe a just to, to put a bow on it too. Mm -hmm. At least from what I understand of the books, it's not proven that he poisoned. Edgar Ironwood, and some people do deny right. that because again, it's like it's like Martell History Month, right? They have to yeah. they have to promote this guy as like the the Jesus Christ of all human beings, because what he wants to avenge his sister, like yeah, understood, but whatever. But the fact that one he embraces the name the Red Viper, or at least he doesn't denounce it, like killing with poison should be a dishonorable thing. It should be. It's seen as that right. throughout almost the entire Seven Kingdoms, except Dorne, I guess, in this situation. Yeah. But not only does he not reject the name of the Red Viper, we see him do it against the mountain. So I, something tells me he didn't just get the idea from this rumor that spread about him. I'm like, oh, you know what? 
it'd be a pretty good idea to use poison. Maybe I should do that in my future. No, he definitely did it before. He studied the shit out of poison at the Citadel. Like, there is no way yeah. he didn't do it. I, To me, I mean, that alone solidifies that he's a bad guy. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a woman's weapon. I think they call it all the time, uh, yeah. using poison, which I think, uh, at least in the, the show, we got confirmed that the Queen of... Um, that Lady Oleno is the one that killed Joffrey, you know, with the poisoning at the Purple Wedding. So, woman's weapon. Yeah, and there's this theory that, you know, Tywin, the whole reason why he was sitting in the bathroom for so long was because he used the, uh, what is it, widow's blood, which shuts down a man's bladder and bowels and makes right. him, like, drowned in his own poison. Which, Dude, where, where can I get something? That is, never mess with a man's bowels. Just let the man shit, okay? You can maybe make him, like, you know, have a heart attack or something like that, but... Oh, can you imagine it's your, a sacred your last dying time. moment? You're like, I can't get it out. Like, oh, come on, that's dude. the worst. You know, contrast that to like, if you had like the best one of your life, like that. That would be great last moments. Like, imagine that. Right. It's like this is like the most satisfying thing I've ever experienced in my life. Well, that's and why then bodies, I die. Like, fine, that, fine. That's why bodies shit themselves is like one last pleasurable moment your body wants to experience, right? Well, yeah, but this is like it, it happens after death. So, like, imagine that happening right before death. It's like that is like that's a dream. That's the dream. Yeah. Well, it's, and then also, you know, Tywin's body stinks afterwards. That's another reason why they think, because after it was embalmed, like, Tywin's body's just, like, stinking up the sep. They're like, dude, what the hell is going on with Tywin? Oh, like, what it's is just, that? It, it's, there's, like, a, there's a line that Pycelle's eyes are watering. It's so bad. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine something, which, you know, the, Pycelle's a little sus for Tywin, if we can be honest for a second. But, yeah, his eyes are watering. I can't remember the last time something smelled so bad my eyes watered, but, ugh. But this is all it's because of, Ob happened. I mean, Oberyn, Oberyn's a little shitster, uses poison, and he should be just going after and killing people on, you know, just with the weapons themselves. I, If he wasn't being such a cocky little shitster, he should have been able to kill the mountain easily, but he just wanted to get what? He wanted to get the confession out of him? Oh, you're right, and that's the thing too, man. See, he's very athletic. He's like in great shape. He has so much battle experience. Like, he, you know, he got sent over to Essos for a while. He ran with the Second Sons. I think he started his own like second son's offshoot almost like a mercenary company, right? Yeah, own, I yep. think he he trained with the Unsullied. He's had a ton of experience, and we see it versus the Mountain just through his agility alone. And he is screwing around, by the way. He's just fucking around. He's able to take this guy to pound school, but he just had to get that confession because, like you're saying, he's he's cocky or whatever. And I understand he wants revenge, so I'm not really him trying to get that confession. Is him being stupid? It's not really a comment on his character. I don't think. But it's it's back to the poison again. Like, why do you use poison if you're so capable, right? Like, what's the purpose of that? Right. It's it's really just a bitch move, and it's kind of vindictive. It's, it's like he likes to see people in pain. He's like a sadist, right? Well, or even like no honor in it. Was like, okay, if I'm going to die, I might die in this fight, but I'm going to be able to kill you no matter what. You know, it's like oh, you're not confident enough in your abilities to kill the mountain as is, or you don't have enough honor to think that okay, if the mountain you know did better than me on the battlefield, that he deserves to live. It's like no, he's gonna die with me. It's like, well, that's on, it, that, that, that is on. true, and uh, but you know the honor thing, I wouldn't die on that hill because you know you have a lot of like Jamie for example, right? Jamie Lannister is maybe not the most honorable character, but he makes a good justification for it. like he says, you know, I don't remember the exact line, but it's like what is honor if it's in if it's if it brings injustice or something like that right sure he's, he's uh -huh. kind of like defending his killing of the mad king which uh, he was right to do that you know what i mean and Oberyn martell i guess you could kind of use the same logic in a way but again he's able to kill the mountain without poison he could kill him in the most dishonorable way possible he could stab yeah. the mountain in the back you know if he wanted to but when it comes to the tywin thing too it's like tywin did not admit like he actually rejected the idea that he ordered the mountain to grape you know, Oberyn's yeah, sister. Right, right. And he actually denied that straight up. And it's totally believable because the Mountain is a psychopath. And it's not like anybody threw Tywin under the bus. So when it comes to the whole, you know, honor versus justice thing, right. killing Tywin is not necessarily even justice. So there's no honor and no justice. Okay, so let's pretend, like, I think everyone believes Tywin gave the orders to the Mountain to go in there and, you know, well, to eliminate kill. the target. Yeah, yeah, right. Line. Do what but you gotta it, do. Everyone, the way they make it sound, you know, when they talk about it, at least in the show mostly, that Tywin gave him the order to go grape her too. It's like no, he never gave him the order to do that. Oh, and also, I, like, I know it's who, unbelievable. Who's in that room where he's like, oh, Sir Gregor Clegane, go in there and you know have some fun for a change. It's like Tywin would never say that. You know, he would just say like, Split go to the hot dog way, my lad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't think so. You no, know, he's not going to say happened. that. And plus, 
why would he ever admit that? I don't think Tywin would ever admit that he said that, even if he did. I don't think he says that. I don't. He, that's not the way he would give the order. So I don't know why Oberyn wants him to admit like you gave him the order to do that. It's like, come on, dude. You're never just just give up on that. And he should have just went out. You know, the mountains out in the Riverlands for how long during you know the Battle of the Five Kings? Why didn't Oberyn go up there and try to figure out a way to assassinate the mountain? Um, I guess he wants it publicly known. Is that the thing he wants to know that uh, the, he's the, the one that killed the mountain? See, I don't know. I, I, it's kind of. He doesn't really seem like that kind of guy that wants it publicly known. The way it's framed, it just kind of seems like he wanted just to do it straight up, regardless of who saw it. But this kind of, I don't want to jump topics here too much, but the fact that he didn't do it in the Riverlands, like you're saying, when he could have had this opportunity to do it quietly, because that's true revenge, I think. So I guess there's two, there's two angles here. One. He really, really, really is convinced that Tywin was involved. So maybe he wanted to do it in one fell swoop. If not, King's was Landing. in the room. If yeah. not, was in the room, literally <laughs> clapping, clapping, cheering along. Had a little kazoo. <laughs> you know, good job, Gregor. Good job, Gregor. Because Gregor, I can't do it. I need you to help me. He's an idiot, right? But anyway. Do what again, boss? <laughs> yeah, right. The hot dog way. The hot dog way. It's like, <laughs> no. Um, but we know in the past that Oberyn just kind of disappears in moments where he's, he would be a vital asset, like in Robert's right. Rebellion. In Robert's Rebellion, what the hell was this guy doing? He's nowhere to be found. He could have been protecting the shit out of his sister. When stuff was hitting the fan, when shit was hitting the fan, don't you think, like, yeah, King's Landing's under siege, under lockdown. Don't you think he could have hustled over there and at least tried to defend his sister? Instead, he, what, shows up a few years later? I, you know what I mean? And what I'm talking about is at uh, at Heron Hall, there was a big ball preceding Robert's Rebellion right away, and Oberyn danced with Ashara Dane. There was a bunch of, you know, it's kind of sus right there, you know, took Ned's lover, but... And then he just mysteriously disappeared for the entirety of Robert's Rebellion. Right. So that, that tells me that during this time where he could have killed the mountain, and I'm sure he wanted to still, he probably had something better to do, and I'm being sarcastic when I say that, because he had nothing better to do. He's probably at the brothel, satisfying his own needs, poisoning people like a little bitch. Yeah, or he's experiencing the unsullied in bed, which a line he throws in uh, the series, you know, where he's like, unsullied or impressive on the battlefield, less <laughs> right. impressive in the bedroom. You're like, dude, okay, thanks. I, I couldn't <laughs> have guessed that one, and I don't know what you expected them to do anyways. We all know what's going on down there. But I, also, the whole thing, I, I totally agree with what you said with Oberyn, you know, like, what the hell are you doing during Robert's Rebellion? But uh, him killing the mountain... And just hindsight now is probably worse off. Now the mountain is like an unkillable zombie. You know, he's Sir Robert the Strong. It's like, dude, this guy is not going to be taken down. You literally created a monster because you wanted to have your public, uh, well, basically because you poisoned him and you, you did it in a point where you got Kyburn, you know, Dr. Mad Scientist Kyburn there mm -hmm. uh, within King's Landing to recover him. You know, so I think overall, Oberyn's taking an L in the grave right now, even though I think he thought he killed the mountain. He actually just did the the realm, and he should disservice. have killed him. On. Like I, it, and all, under all normal circumstances, he could have. But yeah, this is what we said earlier too. Imagine that. Imagine if Chiron wasn't there performing his weird, wacky experiments in his fun little lab. If he had done this in the Riverlands, where it would be mm -hmm. way more ideal situation. Because I, he's not afraid to be a coward when it comes to killing. He could have waited till the mountain was asleep in some brothel or whatever, and paid off the guy who was manning it to go in there in the middle of the night and kill him. Yeah, sure, that's dishonorable too. But he's not he's not adverse to that. Right, yeah. And the other part that Oberyn Martell haunts, at least the, we're talking about the series right now because, you know, we'll get more information hopefully about um, Oberyn within Robert's Rebellion in the books coming out later. And also the Dornish plot's way better in the books than it is in the series. But, you know, knowing that Oberyn dies and then we get the season five Sand Snake arc within the Game of Thrones TV series, that's just like icing on the top where you're like, oh, this just now, it just reminds me like if we just cut Oberyn completely, we might have been able to save us this, <laughs> this experience. It's the worst. The, the Sand Snakes are the worst, and uh, I, him being the father of them, I don't know. I, you have to blame him, right? It seems it almost seems contrived. It's not because it's actually like again kind of expanded on better in the books in mm -hmm. a way, but it's it feels contrived now. Like if if this wasn't a book series and it was just a TV series, it's like, okay, yeah, Dorne's kind of in the background, they don't really do anything, and then we see this random guy, Oberyn Martell, that was really never foreshadowed until this point, and then he shows up, and everybody loves him, and so, you know, Dumb and Dumber or whatever see that, and then they say, oh, what if he had eight badass daughters, and each one had a weapon that was perfectly attuned to their individual personalities? Yeah. It's like, to me, that, that sounds super cringe and contrived, because of the way it was executed in the show, but yeah, it, 
the sand snakes are another reason why I really don't like Oberyn Martell. It's, it's, it's again, more Martell History Month. Yeah, sure. All lords have bastards, right? All lords have bastards. Just something that happens, blah, blah, blah. Ned Stark's like this saint, right, for taking his bastard in and taking care of him amongst his family. And Catelyn's horrible for rejecting him or whatever. I was like, oh, but Oberyn Martell, guess what? He actually has eight bastards, and he's like a perfect father to them. He's like a perfect father. He takes them out on vacations, mm -hmm. and he buys them ice cream, teaches them to fight, spends a lot of time with them. It's like, dude, it's annoying how perfect they try to portray this guy. He's like has no character flaws. If anybody's a Mary Sue or Gary Stu in this universe, it's him. People say that about Jon Snow, but it's over it. It's the Red Viper. Well, every time. Enough you brought up Jon Snow. This just gives us more points. The reason why Ned should have just left Jon in, if Jon is the son of either a Shara Dane or even uh, Lyanna Stark, he should have just left her in Dorne, where bastards aren't looked down upon. Just leave them here. They're they're totally fine. They like their bastards, I guess, down there. Just leave them alone. And yeah, uh, Oberyn Martell has eight bastards. He's like. Eight bastards and how many lovers? Like officially, he has like his one, like main, five or something uh, like that. Paramour, yeah. which also, why don't you just get married? Is it because you don't want to cheat on her? It's like you're gonna cheat on her anyways. What's what's the point? You guys don't even do you guys even believe in the faith of the seven? Clearly not. Like you wouldn't he's, allow this. He's scared of commitment. He's a little bitch. He doesn't want to commit. He's an asshole. He's gonna disappear one day. He's gonna sail off to Essos and he's gonna show up ten years later and says, "Oh, that's funny. It's funny that." The whole war and uh, all the conflict and dangerous stuff happened when I was gone. I, I, it's totally unintentional. I guess everybody I loved is dead now, but I'll just come back and bitch about it 10 years yeah, later. Yeah, you said character flaw. Like, he, he does have a ton of character flaws. That's the reason why we're making this video, but it, it's not framed as a yes. character flaw at all within right. the show. Because they'll say, like, I am very passionate lover. I love so much. I love, I love bastards. I love men. I love women. I love horses. It's like, dude, listen. I, I love this, like, the framing of it being passionate when it's just, like, you're a sex addict, or not even a sex addict, because that's like the South Park uh, line. I don't, you, you don't like South Park, but people in the chat, let us know. You know the, the, the sex addict South Park excuse when all these men were coming out that they're saying like, I have an addiction. I have an addiction to sex. It's like, yeah, <laughs> that's just a way to frame it, to cover your ass. That's his way of covering his ass, saying like, <laughs> I just want to stick my dick in every hole as long as it's breathing. I'm just a passionate lover. It's like, no, you're not. You're just, you're just a horn dog, dude. Men, women, anything that breathes, you're going to stick your, your dick in, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's what I suspect is, was happening during these points where he should have been uh, present for important life events that he could have actually played a big part in. Could have turned the tide of Robert's Rebellion, could have killed the mountain. I think that's exactly what it is. He's just fucking around, satisfying his own urges. And right, it's not viewed as a character flaw because it's not framed that way. But uh, I, it, it's surprising to me that the poison thing isn't framed as a character flaw because Game of Thrones is full of complex characters. Like Jamie's a good example. I brought him up earlier mm -hmm. where he has these definitely overt... Aki confidence, uh, dickish behaviors, right? Like to the Starks and everything. But at the same time, like if you know the backstory and you kind of learn more over time, you learn that, okay, well, maybe Jamie is actually just kind of fighting back against like this like uptight bitch Ned Stark who is like so tied to honor that he's lost all logic, right? And he's like, dude, you're really going to look down on me, Ned, even though I killed the guy that brutally murdered your family just because that scene is dishonorable like i'm so sorry right. i'm so sorry so yeah you, you kind of get like this contextualization of why he's a bastard or why he's being a dick but it's like the reverse with ober and martell it's like uh you, you know what i mean like you right. only have the understanding of why it's a positive trait and even though the context is there for why it should be seen as a negative trait they just like throw it in your face again and again of why like no 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 trust us this is only positive even though all this horrible stuff happened just sweep it under the rug it doesn't matter right. and in the books they do a little better job of making it more complex because he's the one that injures Willis Tyrell a character that's not in the show at all you know the heir of uh, high garden um yeah but they but they just become bros well, who cares yeah. they just become there's no consequence well i know but that's because they have this weird fetish of horses that they could bond over which can you imagine in Westeros? So if you got some weird fetish, how hard it is to find someone. They don't have the internet on Westeros, right? So it's like, oh, dude, you you found somebody that loves horses just like you, and you can send letters back and forth. How much you like that stuff? Oh, yes, we both just like horses, so we were able to bond over that. So, yeah, I'm sure it's like it's not trauma bonding because I don't know how much uh, Oberyn was bonded over this experience, but I'm sure Willis is, you know, in that. And also the whole thing, uh, Oberyn tries to blame Mace Tyrell for this whole thing, right? And he starts calling him the fat flower, and he loves just throwing out insults. That's like a cornerstone of Oberyn Martell right now, too, which he's like the first uh, the first bully. I, I was going to say cyber bully, but it's not. <laughs> it's just plain bullying, you know? Like, he just right, calls people right. names, which they're not even all that clever, right? This one is just the fat flower. Come on. Yeah, fat flower, not impressive. D doesn't it seem though like Oberyn is just sitting there going like, um, 
Like, as soon as something bad happens to Will's Tyrell, he's like, well, his dad shouldn't have let him uh, participate in this thing. Like, it's it's Mace's fault. It's like, come on, dude. You're not taking any blame. It's excuses. It's just excuses, excuses. There's no accountability for this guy right. whatsoever. It's so annoying. He is... He'll do anything to dodge responsibility at all points. It just adds into what I said earlier. If he hears a conflict's coming up, he's fucking out. He's dipping. Yeah. And it, he's completely going to be gone when the odds are stacked against him. And then, again, when he actually does screw up or when he, things get taken a little bit too far, his sadistic mind comes out. And he's like, oh, I'm going to fuck this guy up. It's like, oh, yeah, sure, I did that. It was completely me. It was my decision. I got out of hand. But it's not my fault. Of course not. I was holding the sword, but it didn't matter. It's not. I didn't do Yo, it. It's funny enough. He, like, he goes after Mace just saying, like, dude, it's Mace's fault. Like He shouldn't have uh, let him join uh, this, this tourney. That I accidentally hurt him and, and you know made him a cripple. Now he wants to pass the blame onto Mace, but then when the Mountain does this thing to his you know rapes his his sister, he immediately just like starts blaming people and doesn't want to like he's not accepting the f- fact that you know the Tywin could go like well that's just the Mountain you know Oberon wants to go after Tywin too you know like come on dude just go after the person you think is guilty for it which could just be the Mountain that's period that's fine but then you go like oh yeah then it's also Tywin's fault too. It's like, dude, no, you're just like, you just want to pass the blame on. Well, why doesn't he ever just pass the blame on to like the reason why, like maybe his uh, sister shouldn't have been in the red keep like that or wearing those clothes, you know, when the mountain came in. I know. Where does it end? Well, it kind of makes you wonder how many people. Oprah's Martell's no, no, like it, logic. Runs. You're right. It, it makes you wonder how many people he would have ended up killing if he didn't die versus the mountain. Like, would anybody be alive in King's Landing? You know, that was alive at that time. Like, how many people need to pay for the death of these people that you apparently cared so much about? That you couldn't even be within a thousand mile radius of them during the entire war that surrounded their lives. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I really, how many people would have needed to die? I'm glad he's dead. That's one of the best deaths in Game of Thrones on in retrospect. Yeah, he's like mentally unwell. He could have been like a psycho serial killer, um, insane person because they, they call him like, uh, I think Tywin calls him like half mad. People call him unpredictable and bloodthirsty. Yeah, he just somehow has a justification for his bloodthirst right now but who knows he would just be going down any sort of path and it, well dude yeah he's he's like what's his name uh patrick bateman right he's yeah. like patrick bateman. Yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah that's like this suave dude this suave dude is like oh dude everybody likes this guy men love or you know women love him men want to be him whatever he's having sex with everything he sees he's getting his rocks off and then deep down what does he love to do hurt people the in psycho. the most vile ways possible the cowardly ways yeah the, what a bitch yeah the dorner psycho Dude, yeah, that's that's his <laughs> Oberon Martell to a T. The, 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 the descendant of the Toad. Dude. Yeah, oh, oh, fuck Dorn, dude. Starting the Toad. Yeah, we, I think we should do a deeper dive on Dorn itself and how much we don't like it. I think we just got a comment recently that people are like, uh, "I don't, not a fan of your channel because you're not a fan of Dorn." Which honestly, I'd like comment whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> thanks for the engagement, but uh, also, <laughs> also like, uh, come on, who's a fan of Dorn? I'd love, I'd love to hear people that love Dorn. Like, name one thing that Dorne did. I'll, I'll give you this. I'll give Dorne this one thing. They took Aegon the Conqueror down a peg. Because there might be only one thing I hate more than Dorne, that's Aegon the Conqueror. All sure. right. The, mm-hmm. Right. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's the one thing they got going for him. Other than that, like, what? They can build a really big crossbow. Like, super cool. Super cool. By the way, after they watched Aegon conquer, like, six other kingdoms, they had so much prep time. It's unbelievable. Oh, so, it's, it, is it really even impressive in the end? I don't know. Yeah, Let I me know, know in the comments. Uh, also, something about, you know, I'm looking back now on stories that uh, Oberyn told and, and trying to think like, yeah, well, he's a psychopath. Maybe he's trying to justify whatever was happening there. Because, you know, there's that story that when he first visited Castle Rock with Tyrion as a baby, I'm yeah. wondering if maybe Cersei wasn't the one that actually pulled the pink tip oh, yeah, on Tyrion. It, 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 was, it was actually Oberyn, you know? Or maybe Oberyn was like, can you grab that, pinch it, pull it up? Okay, interesting. Because that is, it's way more in line with Oberyn than it is with uh, Cersei. Cersei's like old talk for the well, most well, part. Also, gets other even, people do her bidding. But but Cersei also hates Tyrion, so why would she want to go anywhere near that thing? You know what I mean? She wouldn't want to go near the cradle. Right. She wouldn't definitely want to go near his tip. But yeah, Oberyn, dude, he, he goes both ways. Maybe it was Tyrion that opened his eyes to that kind of lifestyle. He probably white knuckled that thing. I, for sure. He listen. I think they make a comment right in throughout Game of Thrones. Maybe I'm thinking of something different. That Tyrion's dick is not small, despite him being small. Right. They yes. mention that. I think they yeah. do. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was going to be small until you know Oberyn showed up and fucking wrung that thing out. You know, stretched her out into a 
You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's got a fleck in shillelagh now, which is the opposite of a chode, if no one knows. Yeah. You know, long and skinny. Yeah, he did the, the gonzo stretcher on Muppets Treasure Island. If you know the reference, you know, let me know in the chat. Uh, but yeah, I think th there's a description of Sansa on their wedding night with Tyrion's, you know, his member down there. And it's not a very flattering picture. Uh, to say the least, it's very like she's like it's bulbous, and I was like, oh, this is a gross way to describe. Tyrion. Yeah, it's deformed because <laughs> Oberyn had his way with it, man. Yeah, you know, he's he's biting his lower lip like, oh fuck, you know, like, fuck this thing up, man. Poor it, Tyrion. It, yeah, and then um, it, the whole thing at the Citadel, him saying he got bored, you know, but he he got like a bunch of chains, I guess, and then he left the Citadel. He's Here we like, go. Yeah, this is just cope. He's up to something, dude. I don't know what it is. Uh, what what could be the canonical reason? Was it like him trying to, you know, have like, oh, dude, maybe I could stick, you know, my dick in that. And they're like, dude, Oberon, stop doing that. Stop having sex with these things. I don't know. To me, yeah, there's cope and it's, there's an excuse, but I can't get over that this is just more suck off of this guy. It's like, how many things can we make him accomplish, right? How many things can we make him? Because it's, it's very difficult to forge a single chain link, you know, with the maesters. It's very difficult. It takes like years right. to become a master at a certain craft in order to do this. And he's able to do these six. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm bored. I'm bored of it. You know, it was too easy for me. I had to get out of there. It was too easy. Because regardless of the reason of the cope or whatever, he did forge those six chains. Yeah, which is right. just annoying as hell, dude. It's like that guy. I'm sure everybody knows somebody like it that's super arrogant. And they're just a huge dick. And they can, like, there's, there's basically no amount of ability that they could have in order to fully justify their level of arrogance. But there's still a certain le high level of ability that they have to where you can't really call them out for it. You know what I mean? Like, they're actually right, very yeah. competent. There's nothing more annoying than that. There's nothing more annoying than a non-humble person who's actually really good at stuff. Because if somebody's really shitty at everything, they have no level of ability whatsoever, and then they're super arrogant, it's really easy to say, like, okay, yeah, just fuck this guy. He's super annoying, <laughs> whatever. Like, no one gives a shit about him. No one takes him seriously. But if they're super mm -hmm. good at things and they have an arrogance that's just out of this world... That's the most annoying type of human being there is, and that is over to me. So you're saying the, the mountain was justified in what he did? Yeah, you know, the sins of the brother shall be visited upon the sister and her kids. <laughs> he has, like, a scary close relationship with his sister. Not to say you can't be close with your siblings, but when we see, you know, the Jamie-Cersei dynamic, and then we also see theirs, like, in comparison, it's they're very close, and it's, mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it's, there might have been... You think Aegon? You think Aegon Targaryen, the, you know, the one of his sisters? You think that was little Oberyn Jr., another bastard? Oh, maybe. He, except, you know, he hadn't been seen for a long-ass time, I don't think. So yeah. Maybe not. No, actually, I don't know. I think, I think it matches up, right? Because the the ball at Harrenhal, that was, like, just before Robert's Rebellion, right? Yeah. Or it's okay. like, um, I'm trying to remember the, the time passage between Heron Hall and then exactly when it kicks off. Cause well, either way, I, it's close yeah. enough. I think I think he could have conceived a child with his sister and then that thing was born and then the mountain split it in half as well as the mother. Uh, another reason why I think, you know, Ober Martell sticks out to everybody else within uh, the Game of Thrones series is just because they casted him perfectly with Pedro Pascal. I didn't even know who this guy was, the actor, before it came on a Game of Thrones. And I was like, dude, this guy is really good. But now he's in everything, and it kind of pisses me off now watching in hindsight. Yes. Where I'm like, and also if you look at it like how he's actually supposed to be depicted in the books, he's supposed to be like more snake-like. And Oberyn, or excuse where's me, the widow's Pesca, peak? Pedro Where Pesca, is it? Where's the widow's peak? Where's my snake eyes? I basically am just picturing you know Lord Voldemort with hair. That's what I want. That's my ideal uh, you know Oberyn Martell. Oh yeah, no nose. Yeah, no nose. Uh, oh, I agree, and that's the thing, man. It's, that's where I said at the beginning of this, way at the beginning of this video, it's really easy to get sucked into like this, you know, this perfect character guy who's just the pinnacle of all things. Like he's a great father to his bastards. He's like the best fighter in the world. He takes down the mountain. He's on this like holy revenge mission to avenge his sister's brutal death. He forged six chains at the Citadel. He uh, or six chain links at the Citadel. He went over to Essos and like traveled and fought with all these elite mercenary groups. You know, it's really easy to get sucked into that. Be, and I think a huge reason is because Pedro Pascal, dude, actually nailed this role. And that's the thing about it. It's like, if you were to just watch, let's say, The Mandalorian, The Last of Us, the upcoming Fantastic Four, all this stuff, right. uh, at least me, I look at those movies and I'm like, why is this guy in everything again? Like, wh what what was this like amazing God-tier role that got him uh, so high in people's minds? And I don't think it was Game of Thrones. I think it was more like, I don't even know, The Mandalorian probably. That was probably the thing that got people really, really into him. But the reality is he really did nail this role as Oberyn Martell, even though the yeah. appearance isn't there, like you said. He fucking killed
killed it in this role. And it sucks to see now that this guy is so overused because, frankly, I do think so. I think it's almost a fluke. I have not seen Pedro Pascal in a very impressive role since this at all. I haven't seen an imp impressive performance. Like, it's super cool that he was dark and disturbed and, oh, I'm this, like, complex, maybe anti-villain character in The Last of Us. But is that impressive to anybody? Or in The Mandalorian where he just, you know, this is the way. By the way, it's not even me in the suit. You know, it's like, yeah, oh, know. right? Like, I have two lines per episode, and it's in a monotone voice. Like, what, what is, what's so impressive about this guy in 2024? Yeah, he's fine. He's a, he's a good actor. Um, he's fine. He's fine. He's nothing special. He was great. Well, he was great in, um, you know, Game of Thrones. And that's right. the same way I feel about, right. you know, Charles Dance. He's in other things that he's really good at. I mean, listen, he is the shining moment at the the end scene of Dracula Untold, Charles Dance. Oh, in the modern day. Yeah, uh, but g give me that fucking Dracula Told sequel. But Ober, you know, like uh, Pedro Pascal as Ober Martel crushes it. But yeah, anything else he's in, I don't necessarily think like, oh wow, that was what a performance. You know, that was really good. Like, you know, he was in Kingsman. Uh, he was like the bad guy. Spoiler: bad guy in the yeah. second one. And um, Wonder Woman too. Wonder Woman, yeah, he was like such a cornball guy in that, which I mean, that's fine. Sh you know, show your range. That's totally fine. But he was the best character in that movie. Actually, you know what? The best role I think he's had since Game of Thrones that I've personally seen uh, is the unbearable weight of massive talent with Nicholas Cage. Oh right? yes, because he's funny. That, he he is yes. funny in that movie. But I don't mm -hmm. think like there's a lot of people that are funny, right? Like I don't think uh, I don't think like Adam Sandler needs should get some kind of great role because he's been funny in like two movies right i don't think that right. that needs to happen so yeah like again we're not shitting on him for the game of thrones role Ober martell he killed it man but you know what i don't know maybe somebody can correct me if i'm wrong i don't remember this pedro pascal obsession starting 10 years ago when he was in game of thrones like no way this is in the last maybe two or three years and it's just only escalated it's just like it uh, jean carlos zito it's just oh, like dude. it's exponential he's gonna be in everything Unbelievable. They're the two horsemen, man. We need to think of two more horsemen of the apocalypse, and that's them. The, the four horsemen of the overrated-ass actors, dude. No, because Chris Pratt's really not that uh, obsession. Well, he's in a... Well, he's in a bunch of stuff. That's original. Like, you know, he's in Mario. He's in Pixar stuff. Like, he's in a bunch where I'm like, wow, he's in a lot of stuff. I just don't think people they suck really his like dick, Chris though, Pratt. like Pedro Pascal. Like, people post Pedro Pascal's picture when he's on, like, the red carpet, and he has these weird it's outfits true. on. You know what I mean? Like, oh, my, he's such a beautiful human, a beautiful individual. It's like, is he? He's just a dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right? Is yeah, he? I, yeah, no, I don't see the, like, he's not, um, he's not like, uh, the, oh, I'm trying to think of the actor. I was like, oh, who's the guy from, um, it's not Miles Teller, because that's the other one. Uh, Top Gun, the oh, guy that was just in that Hangman? One. Yeah. Dude, that guy. Yeah, I can't remember his uh, name either. Glenn that Powell. Shitty grin. I, I don't know if it's Glenn Powell. Something. Anyways, let us know in the comments what his name is or whatever, but uh, yeah, he is like, Great looking guy, perfect Cyclops casting. You know, I think we're getting off track here with Game of Thrones. So let's <laughs> it's, just all right, it's all right. It's all right. Anyways, I, he crushes the role. Love Pedro Pascal in this, but you know, it's what a role that to get him um, trajectory to get him into all these other things. And also, he, he stole his role from like his like student, I think, or some person he was working with, acting stuff, yeah, allegedly lessons here. with. Yeah, so that that's even like. <laughs> Like a shittier thing to do. Oh, he embodies so. the role of this character perfectly. Then, right? He's like yeah. a he's a cheater, coward, fucking sadist man. He'll take your livelihood right off from underneath you with poison. And uh, fuck your wife. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and smash that like button. Or not? We don't care. <laughs>